name is Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. And today I'm going to talk about the three little pigs and architecture. Now you probably already know the story of the three little pigs, but did you know that they were also architects? Well, they were. Basically, an architect is a person who designs buildings. Architects decide the size of a building, the shape of a building, and what materials the building will be made out of, just like the three little pigs did in the story that we all know. We have one little pig who made his house out of straw, another little pig who made his house out of sticks, and the third little pig who made his house out of bricks. Now, you're, since you're very familiar with that version of the story, I have a different version to share with you. It's an architectural version of the story, and we'll have to find out what materials these pigs are going to make their houses out of. And after that, we'll have a little architectural scavenger hunt activity that you can do at home, and maybe you'll even get to design your very own house. Let's get started with the tale. The Three Little Pigs, an architectural tale by Stephen Guarnaccia. Inside it has all these cool illustrations. They look kind of like blueprints. And Abramson's Books is the publisher. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a big house in the forest. One day, the three pigs said goodbye to their mother and went off to make their way in the world. The first little pig decided to build his house of scraps. You can see he made some blueprints here. The second little pig decided to build his house out of glass. And he has his blueprint right there. But the third little pig decided to make his steps out of stone and concrete. And he has a concrete method. Now one day there was an evil wolf. He looks kind of evil. Who lived in the woods nearby. One day he came to the house of the first little pig and said, If you know it, say it with me. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the pig answered, if you know this, say it with me. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. This made the wolf so angry. So then he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed. And he blew the house of scraps away. He's barely hanging on to that door. The first little pig ran as fast as he could to his brother. And soon the wolf came to the house of the second little pig. And the wolf called out, say it with me, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the second pig answered, say it with me. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So the wolf gnashed his teeth and said, Well, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house of glass to smithereens. So the two little pigs ran as fast as their legs would take them. To the house of their brother. They're out of it. And finally, the wolf arrived at the house of the third little pig. The wolf growled at the door. Of course, you know what he said? Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the third little pig replied, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. That's a cool looking house. Well, this enraged the wolf even more, who roared, Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, but he couldn't budge the house of stone and concrete. 
So the wolf said, little pig, meet me tomorrow at 7 a.m. at the farmer rights and I'll show you a fine tomato greenhouse. But the pig woke up at 6 a.m. and picked the best tomatoes in the greenhouse and was home slicing them for lunch by the time the wolf arrived. I'll get you yet, said the wolf under his breath. The wolf returned to the third pig's house and said, Little pig, meet me tomorrow at six o'clock at Farmer Johnson's, and I'll show you an orchard full of sweet pea apples. Next morning at five o'clock, that's an hour earlier, the pig was picking the best apples in Farmer Johnson's orchard when along came the wolf. Good, aren't they, said the wolf. They certainly are, said the pig. Here, try one. And as the wolf tried to chase the apple, the third pig ran to his house of stone and concrete. He tricked him again. That evening, the wolf went back to the third pig's house and said, I'll meet you at Frank's flea market tomorrow morning at five. So, of course, the pig arrived at six. He was admiring a fine rug when he heard the wolf approaching. He hid himself in the rug, rolled down the hill toward the wolf, and then the wolf sped away with the rug following after him. The third pig returned home when he and his brothers prepared a roaring fire in the fireplace and settled down for the evening. Now tricked again, the wolf rushed to the third pig's house, saying under his breath, little pigs, I'll get you. So the wolf climbed onto the roof and he shouted down the chimney, I'm coming in to get you. But the wolf tumbled into the roaring fire, scorching his tail. Oh! And the wolf ran away from the house, smoke streaming after him, never seen in the forest again. And the three little pigs ate a supper of tomato soup and apple pie, and they lived happily ever after. And it was a little bit like the original stories, but the buildings sure were different. And if you see in the back here, we see some little blueprints here. There are actually um, a lot of actual buildings. And these three little pigs are actually styled in the same style of actual architects. So let's take a closer look at those architects and those cool buildings that they designed. So as we see the three little pigs here leaving their mother's house, and the illustration is based on an actual house. Do you see the real house on the right side over here? And uh, you can see that that house looks like it's made out of wood, and I see glass, and maybe some stone, a whole bunch of different materials. And here's the first little pig, who is based on an actual architect whose name was Frank Gehry, and they even look a little bit alike. And there you see the illustration on the left. And on the right, we see the picture of the actual house. And that was the house of scraps. I see metal, I see wood, I see a whole bunch of different materials put together. And then we have the second little pig, who's an architect named Philip Johnson. And they look a lot alike. And here is the house that he designed. It's the glass house. You see the illustration on the right, and there it is, a picture of the actual glass house. Pretty cool. I don't know how I'd, if I'd like to live in a glass house, would you? And here we have the third little pig, whose name is Frank Lloyd Wright. He's a very famous architect. And here is a picture of the house that he designed. 
Now you can see an illustration on, of it from the story on the right and a picture of it on the left. Now this house has a special name to it. Can you guess what it might be called? What do you think that is right there? Well, the name of the house is called Falling Water because it was built on the side of a mountain right over a waterfall. That's pretty cool. You wanna hear something else cool? This house is in Pennsylvania and people can actually go and tour it. Now, if you look in the description box below, I'm going to include a page of links where you can go online. If you can't get there, because it's on the other side of Pennsylvania, but you could take a virtual tour of this house. I think it'd be pretty cool to live on the side of a mountain with a waterfall right next to me. Take a look in the description box below for the link to these pages where you could take that tour or do some other fun activities at the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation or learn a little bit about the other architects that you saw illustrated in this book. But now let's get on to our activities. Now you know a little bit more about the real life architects behind the three little pigs in the story and the cool buildings that they designed. Now you get to go on a scavenger hunt, an architectural scavenger hunt. It'll help you think like an architect and maybe you'll even design your very own house Let's find out first how you can start thinking like an architect. Like any good architect, the three little pigs had to decide what material to make their house out of. Some chose glass, one chose scraps, and the last one used concrete and stone. So use your powers of observation to decide what materials these famous buildings are made from. Metal, stone, wood, or glass. Now you don't have to pause right here, but if you look in the description box below, I will include a link to these images so that you can use your powers of observation. You can also try to match the geometric shape because you have to decide what your building will look like. Or what size will it be? What shapes will you see? Um, so you can match some of these famous buildings and structures below to the shape that you can see there, whether it's rectangle, sphere, cone, cube, pyramid, you name it. Now you get to go on a building material scavenger hunt. Architects do a lot of planning and creating a design for a building. So get inspired by the things you see around you in your house and the building materials that you see in your house. Maybe you have a lot of glass, maybe you have a lot of windows, maybe you see some bricks, maybe you see a lot of lights. So go ahead and look at the description box below and you will see this material for you to look at and get inspired. And then you could go on to create your own building or dream house where you decide what materials you want to use you can make your blueprint or your plan, and then you can create an illustration or even try to build it out of materials that you have around your house. Whether that's empty cereal boxes, paper towel rolls, it's whatever you can find and whatever your imagination makes you dream up. Have fun and look for the Summer Reading Mission Challenge on Monday and you can earn points for the Summer Reading Program on Read Squared. Thanks.